you're a tree person, you probably are aware that trees grow slowly. So it's, it's actually the NAP instrument is key because it's a medium to long-term thought process or planning process that the countries go through to then decide um, what happens with the land, the assets, et cetera. So it, it coincides actually with the nature of forest management. If you want to have a number in terms of how many people are concerned in the world and depend on, on forests, we, we have this figure we work with, it's 1.6 billion people. So that's almost 25% of the world's population live and depend on their livelihoods with regards to forest. Basically, it's for planners, it's for national decision makers that are working in, in a multiple uh, set of ministries. So, so it's not just one sector ministry, it's actually also a guidebook that shows entry points no? because there's a lot of sector guides out like very specific on forestry, non-timber forest products. But what often is missing is really the explanation of the linkage to the subnational and national planning. Because we know of the limitations of having like so much English publications, we thought it's really helpful to translate it. So it's now available in Spanish, French and Arabic. And we got, get already a lot of requests, even from, from the Middle East, where you have a lot of like desertification problems. No? And, and so we are kind of proud that we managed to take the publication to the next level and also have it available in, in more languages. Guidebook is also linked to other publications. For example, um, FAO FDA also launched the vulnerability assessment guidelines. So this is like other complementary guidelines that go even to a more specific subject like vulnerability analysis. One of the lessons learned coming out of COVID that we need to really do advocacy, dialoguing with countries where they are, what are the gaps, how we can help to create national ownership. They can only drive this. We can only be there. We are service providers. A lot of technical guidance out there. We have a lot of climate data, but I think the principal matters we need to look at is really climate finance and governance. No? Um, because ultimately the ownership question and the, the possibility of a country to go beyond business as usual is too linked is linked very strongly to power relations and governance questions. That's my motivation on a daily basis is to really um, try to understand how more ownership and, and commitment can be created at a national level.